Hello, my name is Sharif Hani. I'm a PhD student uh, at Faculty of Engineering, Ain Shams University, Cairo, Egypt. Today, I'm going to walk you through my work of improving the system thermal reliability using thermal gradient based placed heaters. Introduction and problem statement. In all electronic applications, the electronic chips contains one important circuit, which is called bias circuit. This bias circuit is responsible for uh, providing reference voltages that are supply and temperature independent. On the left side, we are uh, on the x-axis, you can see the supply variation of 5%. In this case, the reference voltage uh, is changing uh, by less than 1% across the whole um, re uh, uh, region. On the right side, the temperature varies from minus 25 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius, and uh, the reference voltage is expected to be stable across this whole temperature spectrum as well. The, temp the, the uh, temperature compensation occurs by generating two complementary currents. One of them is uh, the positive to absolute temperature current and the other one is complementary to absolute temperature current. And by summing these two uh, currents, we generate um, a, a reference that is stable across the temperature, uh, this temperature region. You can see that um, there is a region of validity and uh, the more we go um, away from uh, the center, the nonlinearities dominate and um, the reference voltage tends to change. So we try always to maintain the uh, uh, region of validity and assumptions of the uh, um, uh, compensation mechanism. The, uh, this problem is even more aggressive when uh, in the advanced applications, when there is big difference between the high voltage and low voltage regions because of different supply um, uh, uh, values. It's also obvious in the digital portion where there is uh, a lot of switching and the analog portion which has uh, less switching and dense circuits. The, this kind of big temperature difference causes temperature skewness, which is difficult to model and simulate. Hence, the thermal gradients causes a lot of uh, silicon failures. The proposed flow is to introduce thermal heaters in the cold or low voltage regions. So basically, the concept is to sense the temperature differences to enable um, uh, thermal heaters for short period of time that heats the um, uh, cold areas till we reach thermal equilibrium, achieve the uh, assumptions uh, and fulfill them for proper compensation and increases the region of validity. This flow is not expecting, uh, not expected to increase the um, overall temperature of the chip because thermal heaters operate only uh, during unequilibrium or uh, after any event that triggers unequilibrium in the chip. These unequilibrium or events that triggers the unequilibrium uh, um, uh, are basically something similar to power surges, power down, um, um, or any other issue that causes the chip to um, go out of the thermal equilibrium. Today, I'm going to walk you through um, the different aspects of designing the heaters, mainly their electrical specifications, how we place and uh, how we place them, and how we ensure even thermal distribution across the chip. So, in the first part, we will uh, go through uh, the temperature gradient measurement mechanism. Then, um, I will walk you through the thermal feedback loop and voltage controlled heaters, and finally, I will include showing you the results and the conclusion. Thermal gradient measurement mechanism. In, uh, um, in previous publication of IEEE IIRW in 2020, uh, there was a, 
uh, tool that uh, allowed um, um, analyzing thermal hotspots and analyzing thermal symmetry. And this is basically using uh, isothermals and generating wave-like uh, structures. Um, and by superpositioning these structures, we were able to generate a heat map that shows the thermal viol uh, symmetry uh, violations and thermal hotspots. We have extended uh, uh, this research and we started to analyze the thermal heat map to um, 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 detect thermal gradient violations. On the left side, you can see a chip that has a condensed power sources or heat sources on the right side and the low voltage part on the left side with no thermal hotspots. So this is reflected in this heat map as big skewness between the um, dark green and dark red regions. However, when we inserted uh, thermal heaters that are symmetric in uh, shape and have the same current intensity and dissipation on the right side, you can see that now we achieve thermal um, equilibrium and there is no thermal skewness and the right side here um, um, is basically the normal operating conditions. We just allow the chip to achieve this operating condition faster and make the thermal um, uh, uh, gradient stable across bigger um, regions and across more voltages. Part two, thermal feedback loop and voltage controlled heat. So the proposed circuit, circuit here basically starts by sensing the um, uh, voltages from different um, regions and uh, through a feedback loop we um, uh, turn on these thermal heaters. So the um, uh, temperature sensors here um, are BGTs that generates current uh, proportional to the temperature. We feed them through a, con a control circuit and th then through a circuit that's similar to the typical startup circuit of the bias cell, which uh, in, uh, generates a controlling voltage and dissipate current in this uh, thermal resistance, hence increases the temperature of uh, the region of interest. The feedback loop uh, um, uh, uh, is completed by sensing the temperature of this resistor or in, in, within this region and closing the loop. Um, when the thermal equilibrium is reached and both sensors agrees um, uh, on a, a certain temperature, then the circuit should stop consuming any current low leakage or almost no leakage and, and then uh, then the normal operating conditions uh, prevail. This is clear here in this circuit where you can see the very low leakage current. Uh, in this case, it's less than one micron. And you can see that also the, in the time domain, the settling time of um, the circuit should be very fast to ensure that the bias cell is always in lock stage and uh, uh, operating through the um, normal uh, the, through the expected op um, uh, assumptions. Part three: chip results and conclusion. You can see here on the left, this is a, a, a real chip uh, on um, a relatively mature technology node. And these uh, uh, red uh, uh, hotspots are showing uh, thermal hotspots because of high voltage consumption. Either it's just high voltage devices or condensed devices. After we do the normal um, um, heat uh, uh, thermal uh, relief mechanisms of increasing the spacing between devices. Sometimes the circuit structure still uh, uh, shows thermal gradient, which is again uh, uh, contains some kind of temperature skewness, which are difficult to model and simulate. So in this low voltage area, there are no thermal hotspots and you can see that it does not have any colors here, which means that it's too cold. So. We have used um, um, the uh, tool that we referred to earlier and by analyzing the heat map, you can see there is big uh, thermal gradient across the chip um, regions. 
after introducing some heaters in the low voltage area and uh, uh, aligning them so that we maintain the symmetry of the chip around the x axis you can see that now the the the, the chip achieves faster um, equilibrium and there is no temperature skewness across bigger validity region so in this work we have um, presented uh, a system that improves the thermal reliability of the full chip and this is uh, 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 this leverages both measuring mechanism and fixing mechanism the fixing mechanism is based on the thermal gradient analysis we were able to achieve uh, the equilibrium faster we ensured stable biasing operating conditions we improved the temperature compensation mechanism with no need for modeling of the skewness during the simulation because it's an, a, a relatively new idea we have encountered some challenges and we are planning them as part of the future work so basically we start we are planning to start by doing electrothermal modeling and simulations which requires electrothermal uh, model cards which are not trivial to um, implement after that we will uh, focus on improving the overhead power dissipation which have been realized to be around 10 percent of the overall chip um, uh, power consumption we have realized that, that some components uh, of the chip that we, uh, of the thermal heater circuit that we have introduced um, are themselves temperature dependent which requires more thorough analysis and corner simulations and finally the basic circuit that have been introduced um, uh, ha uh, has big room for improvement but uh, for now we have achieved the, uh, the prototype that we were hoping for thank you